let me dream neath the sky. This old heart keeps on beating, repeating, pond echoes of the brave and the bold riding high. During the 1870s, the wildest spot in the United States was the desolate region west of the Pecos River. Virtually beyond the reach of the authorities, the railroads, then pushing their way west, attracted the most vicious characters in the country. It was said that all civilization and law stopped at the east bank of the Pecos. It took one man, a lone storekeeper who was sick of the lawlessness, to change all this. His name was Judge Roy Bean. Judge, well, I see you finally got around to fixing that roof. Well, it's raining, it's too wet to fix it, and when it ain't raining, it don't leak. <laughs> <laughs> I've got to talk to you, Judge. I told you mine, son. Well, I just took a ride through the valley. The ranchers down there are pretty mad. Mad? They're always mad. What they got the dander up about this time? Well, it seems a man named Fentrell is driving a trail herd through there, and they don't like it. What don't they like about it? He's knocking down their fences and getting their cattle mixed in with his. They do that every time them herds go through there. You know that, Jeff. Yeah, I know, Judge. But this time, I think they've got a point. You see, Ventra will move those cattle, and they're feeding there in the valley. Why didn't you do something about it? You're the law west of the Pecos, and this herd's west of the river. There's nothing worse than having a lazy deputy. <laughs> Yeah, we'll ride down there and see if we can't find out what it's all about. men want here? We might ask you the same thing. Well, who are you? I'm Judge Bean. We're looking for the man's running them cattle down there in the flat. We've had a complaint. Seems some of your cattle's getting mixed in with the rest of the cattle around here. Those cattle belong to me, and I'm running them to the railhead. What about it? How soon you get them out of here? By tomorrow. Shut up, Kenyon. I'll handle this. I'll cut them out as soon as I can. That's the best I can do. Who is this man? He's my trail boss. He said you get him out by tomorrow. If he's your trail boss, he ought to know. How about it, Kenyon? That's what I said. I said shut up and get back to camp, Kenyon. I'll talk to you later. What's your name, mister? Ben Trill, if it's any of your business. From the Panhandle. Maybe you've heard of him. Yeah, I've heard of him. We don't want to cause you any trouble. Don't try giving me no trouble. You won't like what happens. Well, you just be sure them steers of yours don't knock down any more fences. Like I told you, I'll get the beef moving as soon as I can. This has always been open range, and if my steers happen to lean against a couple of fences, maybe the fences shouldn't be there. Come on, Dallas. You say you'd hear to him before, Jeff? He got a reputation? You might call it that. They say he's the fastest gunslinger in Texas. Well, that is quite a reputation. He can live up to it. See, we better go around through Jawbone Pass and check over those fences. They had to come through that way. Be right with you, Judge.
I thought you were going to help me to round up some strays. Figured you didn't need me. Making something? Nothing much. Mr. Benfrew. Seems to me you said enough already. There's no need to keep the stock here any longer. We can move them out today if you say the word. I thought I told you we weren't going to move these beef until all the strays are in. We've got them all in. I had three of the boys out riding with me all morning. So you're saying you got them all in? That's right. Well, I'm saying you're a liar. Don't talk like that in front of my boy, Benfrew. Who's going to stop me, you? Kid already has your number, Kenyon. I have a good notion to tell the men what you were up to. Go ahead and tell them if you think they'll believe you. You can't keep this up, Ventro. What can you do about it? If you're yelling, I can prove it. Go ahead, go for it. Make a play. Get him, Dad! What'd I tell you? He's a coward. Jody, what happened out there? Ventral hit him. That's what happened. But Dad didn't know anything about it. What's wrong, Daddy? I'm all right, honey. Just leave me alone a little while. Jody said that Mr. Ventral hit you. Not hard. No bones broken. Daddy, please tell me what's the matter. Why is Mr. Benchel so mean to you? Where's Jody? Back at the chuck wagon. I guess he's pretty disappointed in me, isn't he? He just can't see why you let Mr. Benchel treat you the way he does. I signed a contract with Benchel to trail boss his herd to the railroad. Now he's doing everything he can to stop me. But, but why? So he won't have to pay me. Contract says I have to deliver the beef to the railhead by the 14th of the month. That's tomorrow. He's stalling me in every way he can, even to the point of trying to get me to draw against him. And of course, if I did well, he'd kill me. Is it a lot of money, Daddy? Fifteen percent of the sale price. Yes, it's a lot of money. That's why I take this stuff from Ventro. But we got to deliver that herd to the railhead, don't you see, honey? Yes, I see, Daddy. But Jody doesn't. No, I guess not. He should have some understanding, though I'm his father. You keep things too much to yourself. Why don't you just tell them about it? They don't understand. Yeah, I guess I should. I've been too busy to think straight. I'll tell him now. Holly's not here. Strife was not here either. His horse is gone, too. What'll we do, Daddy? Well, if we go after him, we'll lose the only money stake we have in the world. But the boy's upset, and there's no telling what he'll do. We've got to get him back before it's too late. Looks like something's wrong, no rider. He couldn't have been thrown. That horse is standing with the reins down. Again. Don't try stealing my horse. You ain't trying to steal your horse. We thought it thrown its rider. I ain't never been thrown in my life. Now you better put that rifle away. You're gonna kill somebody shooting around like that. I didn't aim to kill him. Aimed to just miss him. Just miss me? Listen, kid, you could have shot my head off. 
I can shoot better than that. Pick up a rock and toss it. I'll show you. I ought to toss a rock right at you. No kidding. Toss a rock. I'll show you. I wish that had been a rabbit. Why? You hungry? Sure am. That's why I left the horse. I was trying to scare up some game. What's the matter? Did you forget to bring some grub when you left home this morning? I didn't leave home. No? And where'd you come from? I don't want to say. What's your name? I don't want to say that either. How long has it been since you ate? This morning. You better come along with us. I know where you can get some of the best fried chicken and apple pie you ever tasted. No, maybe I just better keep on traveling by myself. You better come with us, kid. No, thanks. You sure you won't change your mind? I'm sure. Well... Be seeing so long. Okay. Jeff, I can't hardly wait to get home and get some of that fried chicken and those potatoes and that cream gravy with lumps of chicken liver in it. Yeah, those hot biscuits and that good apple pie. Best food in the whole Southwest. <laughs> So good. <laughs> She's pretty all right, but I don't know about her cooking. I think you're just real hungry. I don't notice you missing any meals around here. You still haven't told us your name, son. Well, that's Jody. Jody what? Just Jody. for a boy alone. Oh, I'll make it all right. I thought I heard someone come in. May I help you? Oh, gosh, I hope so. I'm looking for my brother. Your brother? He's a little boy, about 11 years old. Oh, come on in here. Jody, are you all right? You followed me. Daddy wants you to come back. Well, I'm not going to do it. Oh, Jody, please listen to me. You've got it all wrong about Daddy. Oh, I don't want to talk about that. Jeff, you better follow him. See, they don't leave. What's your name, honey? I'm Sally Kenyon. Why didn't your father come after Jody? He couldn't. He... <laughs> come on, honey. Let's go in my room. We'll talk about it. Storekeeper. What can I do for you? Oh, I'll take some of that tobacco you got over there. What else can I get you? Ooh, let me look around. Well, if it ain't Jody. I'm not going back with you either. Back where? Back to the camp. I don't care if you do or don't. What's the matter, kid? Did you go sour on your old man? 
I don't blame him, though. This old man ain't got no spunk. You're a liar. Don't talk that way to me, kid. Then don't talk that way about my father. What's the matter? Don't you like to hear the truth? You better leave the kid alone. Stay out of this, storekeeper. Listen here, kid. I'll... Mighty important to them. 
That's the way I feel about your father. You know, if he used to fight this man, Ventro, he'd stand to lose a lot of money. That's money he needs for you and your sister, for clothes and food and that sort of thing. That's yours. Oh, thanks. Your father's no coward. And even if he was, well, you ought to him to stand by him. Just because he's your father. I guess maybe you're right. I'm glad you told me about it. You're gonna forget about this runaway, ain't you? Yes, I sure am. How'd you like a stick of peppermint candy? Sure. <laughs> Come right on in the store. You see that? Did you see that? My dad did that. My dad did that. You still think your dad's a coward? Oh, no. <laughs> All right, you let's go. Mr. Kenyon, how long will it take you to deliver those cattle to the railhead? Oh, about 12 hours, Judge. <laughs> Better add another 12 hours for emergencies. Jeff, lock these two pole cats up for 24 hours. It'll be a pleasure, Judge. Let's go. Now, you'd better get out of here and get them cattle delivered. Thank you, Judge. Can we go with you? You bet your life. From now on, we're riding together. That's the kind of grit I like to see in a man. Holding his family together. <laughs> oh. He's turned.
sound of the thundering herd. It's so real, I can feel the warmth of a friendly word. So I know I must go to the land of the Pecos, there to stay.